Welcome to the tutorial series on Network Analysis Made Simple. During the previous tutorial, we have discussed about the branch current method of solving the network. In this tutorial, we shall discuss about mesh current method of solving the network. Friends, first we shall see what is a mesh current method of solving the network. A mesh current method of solving the network can be defined as that in which mesh currents are assumed as independent variables. We know that the network variables could be assumed variables or derived variables, current variables or voltage variables, independent variables or dependent variables. Therefore, in mesh current method, assumed mesh currents will be independent variables. Friends, let me explain the concept of mesh current method through a simple example. Consider the network shown in figure 1 in which we are required to solve for all the branch currents using mesh current method. Before you start solving the network, identify the junction nodes and you see that there are three junction nodes A, B and C. There are five branches in the network and they are B1, B2, B3, B4 and B5. Friends, there are three independent loops in the network, loop 1, loop 2 and loop 3. If you are not sure about identifying these, I suggest you go through my earlier video on network terminology. Friends, I am going to teach you the concept of mesh current method through few questions and answers. Let small i1, i2 and i3 be the mesh currents assumed as shown in figure. I suggest you pause the video for a moment, write your answers for the questions and then compare with the correct answers that I give you. My first question is, if small i1, i2 and i3 are assumed mesh currents, then what are capital I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5 shown in figure? My answer is, Capital I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5 are branch currents in the respective branches. My second question is, can you write the relations for branch currents in terms of assumed mesh currents? My answers are, branch current capital I1 is equal to I1, I2 is equal to I2 minus I1, I3 is equal to I2, I4 is equal to I3 minus I2 and I5 is equal to I3. Friends, the relations obtained between the branch currents and mesh currents are indicated here for convenience and based on this, I will ask you a few questions. My first question is, what is the difference between branch current and mesh current? My answer is, mesh current will flow through all the circuit elements present in the respective mesh, whereas a branch current will flow only through the circuit elements present in the respective branch. My next question is, what inference that you can draw by observing the branch current and mesh current relations? My answer is, a mesh current may be equal to branch current in some of the branches, whereas in some branches, branch current will be equal to the algebraic sum of the mesh currents. Hope you have understood these clearly. Friends, I suggest you please note these points clearly because they will help you to solve the network using mesh current method correctly. First point is, all mesh currents I1, I2 and I3 are assumed in the same direction that is clockwise. 
after we solve the network for i1 i2 and i3 if the answer is positive the actual loop current will flow in the direction assumed if it is negative the actual loop current will flow in the opposite direction of course assuming the mesh currents in the same direction is not a must condition that you may not now there are three unknowns i1 i2 and i3 and we need to write three kirchhoff's voltage equations to solve this network while writing the kirchhoff's voltage equation say for loop 1 i1 is called as self mesh current and if you observe in branch 2 both mesh currents i1 and i2 are flowing therefore for loop 1 i2 will be the associated mesh current if you observe loop 2 i2 will be the self mesh current and i1 and i3 are going to be the associated mesh currents these points you may note friends while writing the kirchhoff's voltage equation for a loop we always trace the circuit in a direction opposite to self mesh current of course this is unwritten rule if we do so for example for loop 1 drop due to self mesh current i1 in all the passive elements present in that loop will be positive and the drop due to the respective passive elements due to associated mesh current will be negative if we do so we can write the kirchhoff's voltage equation mechanically keeping this in mind if we write the kirchhoff's voltage equation for loop 1 we get 10i1 minus 6i2 plus 12 is equal to 0. By rearranging it, we get 10i1 minus 6i2 is equal to minus 12. Let it be equation 1. Similarly, if we write the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for loop 2, we get minus 6i1 plus 18i2 minus 12i3 plus 36 is equal to 0. By rearranging it, we get Minus 6i1 plus 18i2 minus 12i3 is equal to minus 36. Let it be equation 2. Similarly, by tracing the circuit as usual for loop 3, we get minus 12i2 plus 15i3 plus 24 is equal to 0. By rearranging it, we get minus 12i2. Plus 15 i3 is equal to minus 24. Let it be equation 3. Now, the balance equations 1, 2, and 3 are reproduced here for convenience. By solving these three simultaneous equations, we get i1 is equal to minus 9 amperes, i2 is equal to minus 13 amperes, and i3 is equal to minus 12 amperes. Note that all answers for all the mesh currents are negative. Friends, all the branch and mesh current relations are reproduced here, and the answers we obtained for mesh currents also are indicated here. Just by substituting the values of the mesh currents in respective branch currents, we get the branch currents. For example. I1 is equal to minus 9 amperes flowing from A to D to C. Branch current I2 is equal to minus 4 amperes. Hence, 4 amperes will flow from A to C. I3 is equal to minus 13 amperes. Hence, 13 amperes will flow from B to A. I4 is equal to 1 ampere. Hence, 1 ampere will flow from C to B. And I5 is equal to minus 12 ampere, and hence 12 ampere will flow from C to E to B. Friends, let us solve another very interesting example to find the current in 28 ohm resistance in the network shown in figure using mesh current method. I suggest you pause your video for a moment, write the answers for the questions that I ask. and then compare with the correct answers my first question is identify the junction nodes 
there are three junction nodes and they are A, B and C. My next question is, identify the independent loops and there are three loops, loop 1, loop 2 and loop 3. My next question is, identify the types of sources and there are two sources. Source 1 is a practical current source of 12 amperes across which 28 ohm resistance is connected. The second source is a dependent current controlled current source of 2 I amperes across which 4 ohm resistance is connected. My next question is, is that both the sources are convertible? My answer is yes. If yes, shall we convert both of them? My answer is no. If no, why? Because we are required to find the current flowing through 28 ohm resistance and in the process of reduction of the network, the branch in which we want to find the unknown has to be kept intact. So, if your answers are different, I suggest you go through my earlier videos on network terminology and voltage and current sources and their handling. Friends, as per the discussion held earlier, we shall decide to convert only a dependent current source of 2 I amperes. And if we convert this dependent current source, we get a dependent voltage source of 8 I volts in series with 4 ohm as shown in figure 3. Now, if we replace the network with this converted dependent voltage source, we find that we get a network of only two independent loops as shown in figure 2. Therefore, let I1 and I2 be the mesh currents assumed. And if I ask you a question, is it necessary to write two balance equations to solve for I1 and I2? My answer is no, because we already know I1 is equal to 12 amperes. Therefore, by writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation, tracing loop 2 in a direction opposite to I2, we get 12I2 minus 8I minus 28I is equal to 0. But we know capital I is equal to I1 minus I2. And hence, by rearranging it and substituting it for the branch current I, we get the, net, the equation minus 36I1 minus 48I2 is equal to 0. But we know I1 is equal to 12 amperes. Therefore, we get I2 is equal to 9 amperes. Hence, current flowing through 28 ohm resistance I is equal to I1 minus I2, which we get equal to 3 amperes. Friends, don't you feel that the network solving is that interesting by looking into this solution of this network? To emphasize the concept that we have learned, let's take another simple example to find the power delivered by the 9 volt voltage source in the network shown in figure 1 using mesh current method. The solution is straightforward. There are three independent loops and hence three mesh currents I1, I2 and I3 are assumed as usual. By writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for loop 1, tracing it in the opposite direction of self mesh current I1, we get 12 I1 minus 6 I2 minus 6 I3 minus 9 is equal to 0. And by rearranging it, we get 12 I1 minus 6 I2 minus 6 I3 is equal to 9. Let it be equation 1. Similarly, if we write the equation for loop 2, we get minus 6 I1 plus 30 I2 minus 6 I3 is equal to 0. Let it be equation 2. Similarly, by writing the loop equation for loop 3, we get minus 6 I1 minus 6 I2 plus 30 I3 is equal to 0. Let it be equation 3. Friends, writing mesh equation is so easy if you assume 
the loop currents and trace as we decided earlier. Now, by solving these three simultaneous equations, we get I1 is equal to 1 ampere and hence power delivered by the 9 volt source is equal to 9 into 1, which comes to 9 watts. Friends, let me summarize the points to remember while solving the network using mesh current method. The first one is identify the junction nodes, branches, independent loops, types of sources correctly. Next, reduce the number of loops if possible without disturbing the branch or branches in which the unknown is to be found out. The next is Recognize the independent loops and assume mesh currents as independent variables. Let the orientation of all the mesh currents be in one direction. Note this is not a must condition. Write the Kirchhoff's voltage equations for the loops identified. Trace the circuit in a direction opposite to the respective shelf mesh currents. Note that this is not a must condition. Next, the mesh current for which you write the Kirchhoff's voltage equation is a self mesh current. And then identify the associated mesh currents in a branch if currents other than self mesh currents are flowing, they are associated mesh currents. The last one is write the Kirchhoff's voltage equations for the identified loops and solve for unknown. Is it not easy to solve the network using mesh current method? Friends, solving an electrical network is an art and it needs thinking and decide the procedure before you start solving the network and that is very important. And that strategy will be different depending on the network itself. And if you solve the number of problems, certainly I feel that you should get the skill of deciding the strategy and getting the mastery of solving the network by any method. Thank you for watching this video.